What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War cast. It's time to begin our journey once again. Here we are with another Pro League, aka actually this time it's called K League. This one is from 2023, February 20th of that year. Uh, so we're getting closer, you know, we're getting a little, little nearer to the present. I know some of you guys have been complaining in the comments. I've heard some, uh, some of your moaning about how this is not uh, relevant to it. today's day and age. You know what? I honestly don't care. That's fine. Uh, you guys can complain all you want. This is what we have. And I'm happy that we have this. You know, they've been playing. The Korean players have been playing Pro League for years and years. And basically no one's been talking about it. Nobody's really been watching it in the English community. Unless they're watching it on one of those pro player streams because it's not cast by anybody not even the korean koreans have like a commentary they don't have a korean, korean commentary of it um and i've got a hold of some replays so i'm very very happy this is like the first time that anyone has cast these replays and you may think that you want to see like a chronological oh let's go back or let's let's see you know all of 2024 or something like that that's just not what you guys want you guys you guys don't want that you don't want to see every single game from 2024 or every single day from 2024 because that's 365 days most likely nearly every single day there's a pro league uh in the modern era so that's a little bit too much pro league even you guys don't want to see that I think you'd be much, much happier with what we've got now, which is a select few, like carefully selected few days of Pro League. The best of the best for your viewing pleasure. And that's what we've got here. We've got action versus mine to start us off. We'll, we'll be looking at the full lineup here in a moment. I'll actually put the whole thing up on screen here so you can see the entire lineup. This first match has been chosen absolutely by random or by a randomizer. And it's a best of seven match between these two teams. Uh, Action and Mind are the first to face off. And if they have to play each other again, it'll be after the other four matches have been played out. And then you know, it could be their turn again. It'll be selected by a randomizer. If they end up coming out again, it'll be again action versus mine. This is their matchup for the entirety of round number one. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes sense to you guys. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, we're jumping into this one and we've got a 2.5 hatch here coming out of action. Zero pressure coming out of mine because he's gone for a pretty conservative build here pretty greedy build uh, going for the one racks fe uh, into a two racks looks like a pressure timing here gotta start that stim and it will begin whereas action hasn't even built any links he's got just two links here at the front he's got the full vision over the natural, this is on Dark Origin, so a nice modern map for you guys. This is 2023 after all. And both of these players in 2024 are in the ASL group stages. So, I mean, still a re very relevant game here. Nothing to worry about. This SCV going to get blocked out. We've got two sunken colonies here on the way. With the two racks, you can force out at least two sunken colonies, maybe even a third. As you're going to have two medics here to potentially help you tank your way through those two sunken colonies. It's a little risky. You might end up losing everything if you decide to stim and go into this. And mine is actually going to go for it. They'll all be up to the targeting here. Oh my gosh, such good targeting here from action. You can see he wasn't wasting any DPS there. Uh, hitting those two sunken colonies. Actually, he must have had those on a hotkey. 
was making sure that they were both hitting the same marine each and every time does he pull out the one muta that's being damaged no he does not and two of them get very heavily bruised he loses one but he clears up all of the marine medics so this is a really reasonable trade for action mind he did push away the drones from the natural for a little bit but he's lost map control he's only on two barracks the third just came up he delayed his plus one a lot of times players will get that plus one first uh, that seems to be trendy right now but you know mind he kind of went for it right if there had been a little bit of a mistake it was a bit of a skill check if there was a little bit of a mistake there from action if he didn't target his sunken colonies both on the same marine uh, over and over again there it is tough to do you have to put one you can't put both sunken colonies on one hotkey right you have to have one sunken colony on one hotkey another sunken colony on another hotkey and then you have to alternate back and forth and keep hitting the same marine not the easiest thing in the world but action does it beautifully and he is in a pretty okay spot 27 drones he's not lost none of those drones he hasn't started any sort of move towards tech just yet, but he has the third hatchery on the way. There's the tech getting thrown down Hygelus Den over in the main base, and these Marines being held back. An armory on the way now. So we're going to be looking towards a fantasy-esque push, it seems, with the machine shop coming up and the armory going down. It's likely we're going to have some Valkyries coming out here with a few tanks to try and push the front before a Defiler's Mound comes down. Here's the Queen's Nest starting just now. Action has done zero harassment damage to Mind thus far. And Mind at 36 SCVs, is he going to start to cut here? Continuing to build for now. Let's see if he halts scv production and it tries to mount the pressure because of what a lot of terran players have been doing in the modern age is stopping at 35 scvs and then just piling on the aggression trying to max out as many units as they can to try and break through the zerg before they really get online and that might be what we're seeing here out of mind because he has stopped although a little bit later than most players would at 38 SCVs, this is some great micro from action. Dealing damage to the Marines on this ramp. It's tough to get across that ramp there. Very hard to keep your Marines bunched up and cross the ramp at the same time. And bunched up is what you need to be to be able to take good fights with the Mutilus Clump. Hydras are already out here. Over towards the third base. We don't have any sunken colonies or anything like that. It can be very tough to hold all three of these ramps at the same time with just a few lurkers, as well as this ramp on the left-hand side. And that may be where we end up seeing a breakthrough happen for Mind. As the first Valkyrie pops out, or second Valkyrie, excuse me, pops out. It's like these uh, Mutas are maybe just gonna go for the main, try to force the Valkyries back. It's a shame he doesn't have some Scourge with this. If he had four Scourge, just kind of parked over here, they could have maybe caught the, these Valkyries as they came back in. But if he drones out on the field and Lurkers are being set up, but with just a couple of good scans, aggressing forward here, Mind gets that scan. He pushes up a little bit more. There is some space here on the left-hand side. Oh, he gets a tank. Great snipe on the tank, but the Mutas are now very, very low. These drones at the front, way too many drones here from action, I feel. Not respecting this push, and there it is. He's just going to lose that third base. Action gets taken out so quickly by this fantasy-style push from Mind. Really, really well executed by him. A big counterattack, potentially, but... Look at that bunker placement is fantastic. The spreading and maybe going in. This could be a little bit of a mistake. Ooh, he lost a lot of Marines there. And he'll lose a Valkyrie as well. That could end up throwing the game. 
a move like that. You've got that huge bio forest. If you just park it out here and don't allow anything to push across the map, you're probably going to be in good shape. Just keep reinforcing that. Keep that alive. And there's almost no way to go wrong. But if you start throwing Marines into, you know, static lurker positions uh, over and over and losing them, you could end up throwing the game to the Zerg's favor once again. It loses another Valkyrie over here. It is are very low, so they are going to start to fall. One last volley kills quite a few of these. Base over in the top right hand corner. That's about to get scouted here by mine. He sees the Lings. I think he's got to be suspicious now about a base in that top right. No, I'm just going to back away. You can see this is the older version of Dark Origin that had that long pathway along the right hand side. I totally forgot about that, actually. That is funny. I'm so used to the new version now that I didn't even think about this uh, pathway being there. Um, was well, kind of a broken map, I remember, with this back, this high ground over here. I much prefer the new high ground with one ramp. It's a lot better for Zerg, which, I mean, Zerg really struggles on this map quite a lot. As you can see, action, it, there's just, there's a lot to deal with when the Terran player is able to put on pressure like Mind is capable of doing. The Filer is finally here, and with the Dark Swarm and Lurkers, we'll be able to hold everything back. Nice snipe on the Lurker, taking the best end of that trade. Doesn't lose any tanks and gets the Lurker kill, or the uh, the Filer kill, excuse me. Very nice stuff there from Mind, and we have any upgrades rolling. We do not. Kind of stalling out here on upgrades because we just don't have the income to do everything at the same time right now. Some more defilers are coming, but they're not quite here yet. And the tanks on the left-hand side might be able to push through everything. The scan comes down. The siege up is there. He's going to have to pull back a little bit, but he can't pull back too far because he'll lose control of this hatchery. And if he loses the hatchery, the game will end. He's got to keep this thing alive right now. Look at that. Some space here on the left-hand side. That space being bought by the tanks here and then move forward with some of these lurkers and defilers there he gets underground and he will save this for now but i think mine probably could have just targeted down that hatchery and taken the losses and been totally okay looks like we've got a little counter attack going around some lurkers here in the middle of the map but this is the real story what we're looking at here on the left hand side if he fails to get this base online. This game is just over, so he has to get that going. Everything else is kind of a sideshow to that main act there over at, at Action's third base. Some Scourge are starting to come out, but the vessel count is growing, and I've talked about this quite a few times before. This is the danger for a Zerg player who is on just two gases is that the vessels will come out and the vessels will just overwhelm your ability to produce with their constant irradiating. You just won't have the gas to deal with this vessel number and it is starting to grow here. Another base coming down, third base being taken from Mind. Mind is allowing a little bit of room for action to maybe make a comeback. But he's setting himself up for the future. He's in a great spot right now. Action is really going to have to pull something amazing out in order to make that comeback happen. I think we just lost a vessel there. Not 100%, but I think we just saw one go down. Vessels moving out there on their own. And those type of snipes are the things that can actually bring action back into this game. If he just gets a couple more... He forgot that he had a drone up there. I need to get that drone over to... The base and just take that. He's actually going to send the drone up there again? That's kind of hilarious. He's totally forgotten. Okay, there we go. He noticed it. Marines moving around the right-hand side once again. A lot of them just lost their lives to that group of lings, but this time... 
it will be able to push everything back. Coming across this bridge right now, there's just not enough over here to deal with this. Darkstorm will come down in a moment. He actually could go for a plague, doesn't have it. Darkstorm on the left hand side instead. There's really nothing over there, but want to get some value out of that unit anyway. Hasn't opened up the mineral fields here at the back just yet. Trying to move out, looking for a drone down to the bottom left. That's kind of funny. Just hoping maybe he could hide a base in bottom left. Try to get a fourth gas online. He's really trying to go ultra. Which I, re I you would think it would be a, a good idea to go Hydra Defiler here. Try to utilize that much more cost efficient combination, but is really leaning into ultra which i mean it it's great ultra is awesome if you can really get it online but you need that fourth gas to truly make it work and he just does not have that online he's been slowed down a lot on his fourth so everything is a little bit slow he's building a hatch over here what is this let me just see it yeah, mine can see this. I don't know what action is thinking trying to go for that right now. Moving out with another defiler. Gets irradiated, unfortunately. That will go down. Oh, but some scourge connect. That was fantastic. Killing off a bunch of mine's vessels. And I feel like mine has grown so much since 2023. But wasn't 2023 his the time when he actually got really deep in the... ASL didn't he get like second place or something or did he get first no he went second to JYJ I remember uh quite a, a ways back some marines is moving on down to the bottom left gonna try and kill that hatchery but lings are available to shut that down it's like action maybe thinking about going for this high ground base on the left hand center left but doesn't really have much back at home to actually deal with these marines coming across what a few marines and fire bats coming down here and the nidus canal is going to start to come up action is trying to mine this out that's actually hilarious it's just going to cancel and i don't think he can do that that seems crazy to me that he would even think about trying that he's going to get as many mineral patches or as much minerals off of this patch as he can right now so he might get a little bit more but the, the sand is really running out of the hourglass here for action. He's not got a defiler in time to actually deal with this. He does throw it on a plague, which is nice. And links are going to come through eventually. There is also a lurker here on the other side, but links are not trading out the greatest. I have, as long as they're killing something, I guess it's okay. What we're really worried about is gas right now, and he's finally going to have plus three armor and... Uh, ultraless speed at the same time and maybe just maybe with all of those upgrades uh done and these five ultras popping out right now <laughs> maybe he can get something done let's see it he's got four ultras now two more are about to pop this one single lurker not able to do much against two fire bats his ultras are going to come out here and actually pick off a small group of medic and marine. The lings are getting on top of everything on the left hand side here. And plus three armor is done. This is a little bit of a scary moment here for Mind, who is about to let the fourth gas come online. That fourth gas at center right, if that comes up, it could spell disaster here for Mind. Dark Swarm? Where is it? Dark Swarm. Okay, there we go. He throws down a Dark Swarm. He's got some more units coming across. Don't throw anything away right now. Action has to be extremely efficient with every single unit we've got here because he is so low on units in general. 32 minerals left on this patch. If he had opened that up, he could have started to flow units into that Terran main base, but he just can't do it right now. Mind is gathering his forces in the middle here. He's got quite a few tanks, quite a few marines. He's going to go ahead and start a fourth base here. Fourth gas is now online. Another vessel falls. Let's see if Mind can push this base. All he needs to do is shut this down. That is it. 
one dark storm would slow us down by quite a lot but he just can't afford it right now can't afford to be building those he needs to bring all the ultras together he can't afford to be fighting with only half his army in this final battle here we go he's bringing everything together diving on top of mine's army it looks like he's going to be able to clear everything stellar work here by action holding on to those just three bases for so long but barely long enough to have five armor and two attack finished on these ultras and they are able to break through defiler moving around the top side that'll be killed by a sign Cecil. not gonna make it into that third base but another defiler moving down the left hand side let's see if this can make it over there it only takes one defiler big flag big 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 flag there very nicely done action coming in with some scourge he's got a few ultras here but they are quite hurt ultra with the irradiate there's another defiler coming down from behind another dark storm can be thrown down here if he recognizes it that's gonna help him out a lot one more nope doesn't have the dark swarm gonna go ahead and bring forward a few more lings here we're getting very close to complete mining out depleted and nearly depleted on that second gas this is getting bad for action he's gonna have a really hard time continuing this game as his gases start to dry up mine just needs to weather the storm and get his fourth base online it's so important another great plague there on those vessels and a drone heads to bottom left big moment here for action if he can get that fourth or fifth base online he won't be on five gases but he'll be able to continue this this fight here army moving forward another great plague ultras are on top of this they're clearing out the marines mind has he just run out of steam he's got quite a few vessels to continue irradiating but he just doesn't have anything over here on the right hand side to defend the SCVs and he's gonna get to work now action getting to work in this mineral line is gonna kill all of these SCVs so so quickly he's dropped one dark swarm and put an ultra underneath it just as a placeholder here to prevent oh this one mutilus comes in five kills on that mutilus five vessels go down in a sudden fury can he get one more one more plague on these no just another dark storm in the natural that's hilarious dark storm in the natural and you actually can't get out of here look at all the marines that are stuck he's gonna kill his own supply depot so he can get out of his own base this ultra has seven kills right now these lings are gonna start to light up that mineral line as well finally the marines are able to come out and fight these ultras in his natural mind is just clinging on in this game but is running out of steam and gg is called wow action with the comeback here mind he had this game man i bet he can just he can feel the you can feel the salt from mind at the end of this game dude he was playing with barely anything remaining but he's like how the hell did i lose this game well a few small moves just tiny chips off the block over and over and over again it's a real shame that he didn't target this hatchery and then he tried for that attack into these this lurker position after killing the third if he kept that marine group alive and you know it's it's a huge marine group but just keep it spread over here and bring up the reinforcements on this side you just delay that third base as much as possible it's basically an unlosable position but action finds his way through this game into a victory for his team. We're going to jump into game number two, guys. All right, guys, hopping into game number two here. We've got Sharp in the bottom left, Free in the top left. Both players in the SSL this season. Looking forward to this match. That was quite the comeback from Queen. Or excuse me, from action in that last match. Pretty impressed, honestly. A bit of an error by mine though he really let that one slip through his fingers his greasy little palms maybe he was uh, a little bit nervous to the, due to the fact that he just about took that one away and that it was starting to slip away sometimes that happens you know 
when you're playing Brutal War and everything is going according to plan, everything is is going very well, and you find yourself in a big lead, sometimes you start to sweat a little bit if the pl the opponent starts to come back, right? You kind of let off the, the gas a little bit, you take a little breath in. Oh, okay, well, we're, you know, the plan worked, we're ahead now. Uh, and then, you know, one or two things start to go wrong, your palms start to sweat, you start to freak out, man, this would be embarrassing if I lost this one. And... You know, things just get worse and worse from there. It's um, not uncommon, that's for sure. It's definitely happened to me a few times here and there, more than I'd like to admit. But uh, something you have to overcome if you want to be top, top tier professional player. I'm sure it is a difficult uh, thing to do. Some players who are more emotional, I think, are more prone to this. What I'm just talking about. Feeling under pressure. And letting it get to them when they are in a, a lead. Kind of falling apart from that. First Zealot here getting across the map. Free. Checking that front. We'll just be backing away. And he's managed to hide his SCV in the main. Sharp has. That is a sneaky play. Now, this is not for a proxy or anything like that. It's nothing crazy. He's just going to get a really nicely timed scout. Well, he'll be able to get in there and just see exactly what's going on. I thought, I think we saw a range finish, but I'm not 100% sure on that. 400 gas in the bank right now. Did he cancel range? It is possible that he would have done that. Robo here in the back. Feels a little bit fast for range to be done. But I'm not a Protoss player. Meanwhile, Sharp goes ahead and throws down his uh, CC. Okay, there we go. He sends in the SCV. And he gets a scout on that robot robotics facility. There's the range. He did cancel range. Oh, free. You tricky, tricky boy. You gotta scout your main base, though. Gonna go for something like that. And just not even look for the SCV. That's unfortunate. And well, Sharp knows everything now. He knows that his opponent has been very greedy with the Robo. He got the Nexus. I think he canceled range to get the Nexus. And then he went for the Robo. I think that's what happened. And that'll leave him open to a counterattack. Right? We could see a big counterattack come from Sharp here. He's got one tank out. Second tank is about to pop. More marines are being made. I think he's going to go for it. Yeah, it makes sense in this spot. Absolutely. I'm going to make a vulture. Mines are on the way. Another vulture is going to be started. He's just going to come across the map and try to berserk him down here. Let's see if he can get in and just kill Free right now. Free throws down a second gateway, realizing that he's in a little bit of trouble. He will finish range before this attack comes in. Just barely, I think. Which is really, really important. He's got two dragoons in his main. One pylon at the front. A little bit of a spotter pylon. That could actually help him out quite a bit. Because he needs as much forewarning as possible that this is coming in. He's still going to get trapped behind his own wall here, I think. As the mines get thrown down at the front. Yeah, he can't really come out here and fight this. And we may just have to give up the wall, which would be unfortunate. Pushing right in here towards this natural. He's going to drop the mines on top of this. One dragoon. Oh. Damn. Well, that kind of went sideways. Not going to lie. That was a little bit un unexpected there. Free with a great handling of that delicate situation it seemed like he was almost going to just straight up lose there but luckily for him he pulls the the dragoon at the front and drags the mine into the army now he's not doing the best job of cleaning up these tanks he's got one tank kill but he lost quite a few dragoons there a little bit sloppy from free maybe in a similar sort of mindset thinking like oh yeah i just crushed that let me go ahead and chase down every single one of these tanks, but 
Sharp was not gonna let that happen. His rallies were very good, very well timed, and now he's back here at the front. See, look at how quickly things can flip back and forth in this game. One moment free looks to be in an excellent position with a great hold at the front, and the next moment, he throws away a few Dragoons, and we're back at his natural again immediately here. Sharp just going to barrel down onto free. Let's see if he can come out here and actually kill one of these tanks. Really important that he gets rid of some of these tanks before the number really starts to stack up. Remember, there's only one factory with one machine shop building tanks right now. So it's going to take a while for that number to build up, and every tank kill is really important. If you can get in there and kill the, this one more tank, then... It, It'll just be one tank again, and it's very slow to break through anything. It is going to break down the wall, but we have now a shuttle. Are there any zealots coming out here? He has to rebuild a bunch of pylons right now because he's a bit lacking in those pylons. Just no Psy to actually deal with this. Now he's going to go around the back. Let's see if he can land a reaver and get a good shot off. One shot gets the tank he gets another shot off there on the secondary tank the tank that's coming in to reinforce no oh man free just lost his chance i think sharp is gonna close the noose now ouch that was a lot of kills six and five on these two tanks that reaver going down and actually the shuttle looks like fell as well so that is about as bad as it can go here free making some critical errors but Remember guys, this is 2023 free. Free in 2024. Eh, he's made some progress. He's made some strides and he is now uh, at that ASL level of play. One single vulture coming up here. Sharp just going to polish off this game. But it really did look like free had a chance here. It wasn't like Sharp completely bodied him. He's even going to kill this last tank, it looks like. Wow, he gets the tank. But at the end of the day, it's 33 probes to 51 SCVs. He hasn't been able to mine anything off this third base. He's trying to break through this wall, but another tank arrives. More vultures going down. Looks like he will kill this last vulture. But another tank arriving means he has to pull back once again. And the SCVs... Fixing this bunker, super annoying. Sharp, now gonna add on more factories. His production is increasing. He has that second gas operational. One last breakout from Free. He gets one more tank kill, but he loses four Dragoons to that. And there's just not much hope left, men. What can you do? Four factories, or four barracks versus four fact. Oh, a Reaver coming in. He is going to be able to drop here in the natural, looks like. Can he get a big shot? That's a good one. Not a bad hit at all there. Getting a few more kills. But it's really just a drop in the bucket. 32 workers to 46. One tank left. Is it possible? Can Free break out of this? Out of these chains? Can he break these cuffs? Oh, he breaks out. I think he's going to do it. The Reaver definitely went down. That is for sure. But he... Uh, I, I don't know. Can he actually get out of here before the tanks come? The tanks are on their way. One more bunker is all that's left. He, he's just barely going to get out of here. This is crazy. Free holding on with his fingernails and manages to push back sharp. Unbelievable. He's been able to do this in this game. This is craziness, but I mean, Sharp has so much production now. I think he can just whittle him down, and there goes all the Dragoons. That was unfortunate. It looked like he was looking for a mine drag or something. Maybe he was trying to get this mine to drag in, but he really didn't, uh, didn't do too well with that. Losing almost every Dragoon, and now there's three tanks at the front once again. It's inevitable, Mr. Anderson. He is going to break you. The machine of Sharp barreling down on the one. Neo here free, just barely holding on for dear life. 
It seems like he died once already, but he came back. And he is indeed the one. One more shot, tank. Finishes off that Reaver and GG is called. Free is not the one, he is not Neo. He's been kicked out of this game. Sharp will continue on. Or sorry, Sharp takes one point for his squad. Forgot it's not King of the Hill yet. That's in part number two, guys. Jumping into game number three. Let's get it. All right, well, we're all tied up now with Effort spawning in the top left-hand corner and Barracks down in the bottom right. Unfortunately, this season of SSL, we do not have Effort in there. He's out with a wrist injury. Hopefully, he'll be back. Actually, two big-time Zerk players out right now with wrist injuries. Larva and Effort. Kind of a sad state of affairs, if I'm being honest. Probably the reason why there's not as many Zergs this season that managed to make it in. I think they have the least number of qualified players in the round of 32 or yeah. I want to say round of 24 for some reason, but it's definitely the round of 32. Barracks here. He's managed to make it into the SSL. He is a beastly TVZ player, and that was no different in 2023. He was absolutely scary. He was frightening in this matchup. But what was lacking, I think, were his other two matchups, and hopefully he has rounded out those skills a little bit more. Starting out here with an eight racks, gonna go and scout in two different directions to find out where his opponent is and try to put on that pressure early effort for his part in a nice position here cross map he's going to be scouted last and the bunker will be the latest that it can be uh, from this situation he's gonna scout in the bottom right here in a moment unfortunately the scout hasn't come through yet oh where's he going with this he wants to take a quick third there's no gas at home effort trying to skip out on gas the bunker starts but he has to retreat immediately interesting build here from effort opening up with the early pool into no gas three base you don't get to see it very often i'll be honest this is not a typical build that you see out of any Zerg players, not to mention Effort himself. And so Effort going to be mixing it up here, really changing it, changing the pace of the game by a lot. Barracks, he's a very scary player, but how will he respond to Effort's three base before gas? You gotta play in kind of a different way. I think though, we might be okay to just do two racks and push. He's actually gone one racks into a CAD. That is interesting. He really wants to put on the early pressure here. Assuming that effort is not gonna ling all in him, considering there's no ling speed to deal with, probably a a good bet here that Effort's not going to Ling all in him. He's just going to be hanging out here at the front, continuously making Marines. And where is the second barracks? I'm seeing a barracks. Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. So he's going two racks. He was faking the CC here. I wonder if Effort actually saw that. Two. Oh, he sees it now. He sees it now. I think that effort is going to be okay in this game. All he needs to do is build a few sunken colonies. Three to four sunken... He might as well even build four. Sunken colonies will save you in this position. He starts the second. Oh, don't get greedy now, effort. We should have a third on the way. There it is. He's going to start the third. The Marines are already halfway across the map. This means that two will be done when he arrives, but the third is not going to be just quite ready. 
It's just not quite going to be there. Marines heading down towards the bottom left now. It feels like Barracks is going to take the consolation prize of this bottom left-hand corner base. Now, a Ling running around inside the main, it might have actually gotten a kill on an SCV. Though I don't have confirmation of that. Marines heading up here on the high ground. They're going to be able to pick off this base with little to no trouble. This one Ling here. Going to try and get some scouting information. Looks like it might have seen that CC. Drone's going to make a run for it. They'll probably all end up getting tracked down here, though. Trying to hide behind the minimap. Nice moves there from effort sitting on his two base though i think he's completely fine with this you know the cc is so late the only thing really that barracks has going for him is that he got the very quick academy he's already got the upgrades finished in that he has this pretty sizable force of marine medic out on the map he can't really challenge for the moment range is now coming up a second barracks on the way but look at that overall worker count. It's really favoring effort as his spire comes up, his tech comes online, his mutas will start to increment out. This army out on the map is going to be in some trouble. He's going to probably want to send that back home. Another drone heading out over towards the top right hand corner for effort. He wants to grab that base five mutas and plus one on the way. It's a bit late, but it is what it is. He went for that gasless build. And barracks. With now two barracks. Starting to pump out some significant number of units. Maybe enough to break a base. Oh, he rebuilds down here. I guess he hid the drone. And fire bat on the way. Oh, or on the map, excuse me. Ling's kind of scouting around. Kind of a sneaky play here from effort just to hide that base for now. Down in the bottom left. That should come online without too much trouble. He's going to be able to put on some pressure now. Getting in with the mutas. A little bit of a check there. Seeing if the turrets were on time, but they are. And we have quite a bit of Marines here. The only problem is the SCV counts not quite where we want it. And we're going to be able to pump out a bunch of drones here as effort. Get them down to the bottom left. Ooh, the Fireback Scouts down in bottom left. That is a very nice scout. You know, Barracks really doesn't want to be adding on more commsats right now. The fact that he scouted that with that one Firebat. Really helping him out a lot here. He knows exactly where to target his next attack. He's got his factory nearly finished up. Queen's Nest and Lurker aspect on the way now. Effort still in a reasonable position. This has been kind of a wild opener, but we're actually coming into a pretty normal situation now. Four kills so far. And you get a five, six, and flies right out. Wow, did we lose any mutas? No, 11 whole mutas left over. Well, nearly whole, 22 HP on that one. About the same, nine HP on that one. Kind of incredible that those are still alive right now, but he's looking to loop back around. I don't know if you want to take fights with this Marine Medic Ball after taking that much damage. Kind of crazy that all of those survived. A little bit of that plot armor here for effort. Keeping all of these alive. He's going to start to lose some. Well, he lost two there immediately. Just by flying into range. He slows things down though just that little bit. Maybe he can get these lurkers online. I'm very surprised he's not blocking this ramp. There we go. I think he might have missed block that though. What I like to do is right there, like this corner right there, if you build the egg right on that corner, you'll actually block it 100% of the time. I think he he's done it. He's blocked it. Okay. We're okay here, Zephyr. He's going to be fine. No, in the qualifier match, there was an error where Shine actually missed 
uh, in the SSL qualifier. He missed the egg block on the ramp and he lost due to that. So it's still possible, even at the very highest level, to make that mistake now and then, especially under pressure. Like we just saw effort. He was like struggling to get the lurker there or the hydra there just barely in time to save that. It wasn't like he was getting attacked already or anything, but he only had a few short seconds to make sure that he got that in the right spot. Manages to put that down in the correct position. And now with vessels on the way, Barracks will seek to break this base before we have full defenses set up. Nidus is already here though. That Nidus is really important. Having that Nidus come down already is awesome. The creep colony there as well. A nice addition to the defense. Just in case there's a drop here. Or maybe back here the Nidus can get targeted but the Creep Colony or the Sunken Colony may be able to buy a little bit of time. Trading in some of these Mutas for a little bit of damage here in the main. These Mutas are not very worthwhile anymore. I don't have a lot of value here and he manages to kill quite a few Marines and a Supply Depot. So getting the most out of these units right before they become kind of useless. We've got Scourge spread out. Around each base, there is some good Overlord coverage as well. You can see things as they're coming in. Would be nice to get an Overlord down here. If that were possible. But I feel Effort's position right now. He's got to be feeling good. There's just about like a, f a few minutes here. Between... You know, once he's got this third base up online and when he gets the Ultralis out, where things could potentially go very, very wrong. You can see he's adding on a bunch of extra hatcheries. He's being very conservative with how he takes this fourth base. Doesn't want to get over eager. Come out and try to take this and then maybe end up losing it maybe end up losing this entire base in fact plague here is just about done plus two carapace is on the way wings are scouting out where the bases are where the army is excuse me but we have bases coming down for barracks right now one base just outside the natural and four dropships so this is the move that barracks is going to decide to go for this is exactly what I was talking about. We've got just a few chances here for Barracks to try and get something done. And even though Effort is quite far ahead, that he's in a great position where he probably should be able to take this game away. If one of these moves ends up working for Barracks, can absolutely throw this entire game for a loop here we go coming in for the irradiates throws down three irradiates on these lurkers can he get one on the defilers well yes he does he sees where the scourge are as well as he identified these ones down at the bottom oh this is exactly the overload i was talking about having that one there really really nice fire bats and marines gonna save this base where are we going with the dropship? This is the most important part of this game right now. Where are these four drops going to go? I think he's waiting to draw some attention maybe over towards the natural. Before sending these in. Or maybe he's going to go for the main. Seems like he may end up going towards this main. Lings are coming out. En masse. Might be willing to try it. Pushing towards that Terran base. What if you Scourge in this group? He's going to look to snipe some of these vessels. Vessels here. Oh, one does go down. Secondary vessel might end up falling. He needs to target. Ah, another vessel goes down. No target there. Could get a plague, but we need one more consume. There we go. He gets the plague on the entire group. Here comes the drops down into the bottom left-hand corner. Not the greatest hold here from 
effort, but maybe with just a couple of lurkers popping out of that night is barely in time. He may be able to hold on. A lot of these Marines are going down. Can he target the hatchery? Well, even if he does, there are still two more hatcheries here off to the side, which should probably help him out. The night is going down is actually the big story here. If he can just back off a little bit, okay. Stays out of range there. Looks like some of the medics are going to go down, but the extractor will fall. Another drop coming in. Oh, he loses that drop. Probably full of units as well. That is unfortunate. Some mutas are coming from behind. More reinforcements coming up here towards the front. Is there an opportunity for Barracks to break? He is losing all of the Marines, but at the same time, this army running into the front is huge. May actually able be able to run up this ramp. He's going for the kill on the Defiler. He gets the Irradiate. That's huge. That is so big. I don't think he can get a uh, Dark Swarm on the ramp. He can. Okay, he got the Dark Swarm on the ramp. That's really important right now. Just barely saving himself with that Dark Storm because the Nidus is not done. If he didn't get that Dark Storm on the ramp, we would have seen Barracks just barrel up that and completely take over this game. Still have two dropships left. Looks like they might be headed around the long way down through here. There are still Scourge though in that position. Vessels here with almost enough energy for Irradiate. Gonna start throwing down those spells. One more Defiler pops out. And it seems like effort has held. Oh, he lost one of his dropships. That is painful. Losing the dropships right now. Really, really rough stuff there for Barracks. He wanted to get in there one more time to try and disrupt effort. But you know what? He's done a good enough job, I think. He's managed to really even this out. Now, I don't know where that Defiler came from, but it's managed to make its way all the way over here now this is a fire bat bunker triple fire bat in the bunker is pretty darn good at holding off ling and defiler play running up this ramp now oh my god he's gonna get on top of this throwing down a uh, irradiate on this one vessel he's trying to do an eraser trick on all these lings that are pouring forward but it looks like he's just barely gonna lose this force meanwhile the lings actually killed the cc Oh no, the CC goes down. Some forces over here are gonna get taken out for free. That is truly unfortunate. Barracks is falling apart. He has another base down here, but he lost that CC. He's really having a hard time now. Going to work on this base. Can he actually kill these two lurkers? No, he's gonna have to run. And now Ultras are out on the field. Barracks, I think he's just about run out of wind in his sails. He's pulling the SCVs. <laughs> just kidding. He's heading down to the 6 o'clock. Command center over here finally being rebuilt. We will get some mining going once again, but Barracks is limping. Unfortunately, the uh, distance from here to there is the shortest, so... Instead of returning minerals to here when you long distance mine, it goes to here. Kind of a sad state of affairs there for Barracks. He's running very low on Marines. His Marines, of course, have that plus three, but plus four armor is allowing the Ultras to just clear them up. Taking care of this six o'clock base is probably the nail in the coffin. Gonna force at least the SCVs to run from that position. But a few Marines here are going to help to clear this out. And effort. I mean, he's just getting his fourth gas online now. He's finally got it up. But he's only got a couple of minutes before his gas in the main dries out. Now, can effort end this game right here or will barracks be able to stabilize it? it's looking like effort can take him down the dark swarm there on the base and more reinforcements coming up right now Ooh, a great plague he hits everything with that plague and barracks is not even going to be able to hold on to this base i don't think he's uh, much less this one down here oh we've got the queen <laughs> get him 
There we go. A infested command center. You love to see it. Effort grabs that CC. Gets the FGG barracks taps out. He's not even going to let him make an infested Terran. Well, that's BM. That is some bad manner right there. You got to at least let him make one. Try to drop it on your SCV line. That is the manly, the gentlemanly thing to do. <laughs> but all jokes aside, guys, kind of a nice game here from effort. He really held on in some chaotic, messy situations in this base down here at the bottom left. Barracks almost managing to break, almost managing to break him there. So close a couple of times to getting through and actually winning, even from a bad position. It is very tough to win a game versus Terran as Zerg. There are so many opportunities that the Terran can make to break you. And if anything gets through, you're in a whole lot of trouble. Now, Effort, still after losing his fourth, was in a tough situation, but he pulled it out nicely. Plenty of good moves with his Defilers. His control is on point. Man, I love Effort. I wish we had him in the scene right now. Hope his wrist gets better soon. We're going to jump on to game number four. Okay, jumping into our next game here. We've got Gamo versus Motive. Now, I was informed by Dude Nerd, the guy who sent me these replays, that this matchup was actually selected beforehand. So, Gamo and Motive were destined to fight each other in the Pro League because they were just a little bit below the level of the rest of the players that were in this group or in this uh, day of Pro League. They wanted to keep it balanced, so they made sure that Gamo was always going up against Motive. All the other matchups were random, but this one was pre-selected. So, at this time, Gamo and Motive were similar in skill level and below all the other players. And look how times have changed. Motive now in the SSL group stages. He's been growing so much as a player. And Gamo is kind of stagnated. I think he got knocked out like round one in the qualifier. So that's crazy. These guys just a year ago were evenly matched and now Motive definitely a better player. Making leaps and bounds ahead of his former colleague here, Gamo. His former competition. Now Motive getting the first Zealot out. He gets two hits on the first drone and drops a pylon in the natural to prevent Gamo from taking his natural out in the front. He has to take it over at the side here. Two Lings are out now. And the pylon gets cancelled just as it's about to finish. We can Im imagine we're going to see a lot more Lings popping here. Gamo actually hiding two Lings at in his main. Maybe trying to conceal the fact that he's building more now he's going to send these links out to the front gas goes down at 255 somewhere around there it's a good timing against the gateway opener you're not going to have quite as fast of a gas here as uh, as the protoss player you're busy pumping out zealots pretty much non-stop and oh a bit of a mistake here for motive why did he come down the ramp there with that zealot i thought he had the perfect hold and only two lings were at the front. There's no need to pull the third zealot down the ramp to try and fight that. And now he's going to let one or two lings roam around in this main. Maybe get some kills here. We'll try to keep an eye on that. See if they end up picking up any kills on these probes while the two other zealots head across the map. More lings coming over here. Going to try and get some damage. Maybe could go after this pylon. One Zealot does pop out, though. These two uh, Zealots getting to work on the third hatchery. Another two Lings coming in here. Oh, he gets one Ling. That is big. Ling speed is just about done. Well, it's about halfway done now. These Zealots hiding behind the mineral patches. There's quite a few Lings out. Motive taking advantage of Gamo's lack of concentration there for a moment to grab a kill on one of those lings and back away behind the mineral patches. Pretty good play so far for Motive. He's managed to not take too much damage. 
in this main four links here though and link speed about to finish up six drones in production it's like game was going to get back into his regular drone production try to maneuver his way out of this kind of sticky situation he's found himself in with just 17 drones at the moment and not a whole lot going on back at home he doesn't even have a layer on the way so he's definitely been slowed down quite a bit one probe does fall slowing down motive any bit is going to help out a lot he almost loses another one does kill off that ling though and only one ling remains so that should be cleaned up here in a moment these two zealots are giving a lot of great information to motive from behind here seeing exactly the drone count doesn't even really need to get in to see the main or natural when you can see how many drones are being produced gives you a lot of information about what your opponent might be up to is he gonna get a probe oh oh he gets one probe so that probe and ling traded their lives and i think the game was going to be pretty happy with that he saw the timing on the stargate and everything He's going to throw down a Hydralist Den to try and deal with that. We've got extra hatcheries coming up. And Game was going to play from an awkward position here. This is never how you really want to play. This has just been forced, right? Game was had his hands forced here. He's not been able to play his normal game. His macro is all screwed up. But he's managed to slip out 27 drones despite his lack of overall tech. Right, he just gets his Hydralis Den online. He doesn't have Lair. He is going to have a pretty okay economy. It's not great, but it's getting there. Now, these uh, Zealots going to come out and trade now. One Hydra pops out and might as well trade off those Zealots for some damage rather than none. Corsairs sliding through. He sees the Lair is just on the way now which is a lot of information here. He knows that we're going to have Hydras popping out. He knows that we're going to have uh, those Hydra upgrades coming and that there's going to be a lack of Mutas in this game, lack of Scourge as well. So uh, also the Overlord speed is going to be very, very late this game. So a quick switch into DT could be really strong. He adds on three more gateways. And that Templar Archives coming up here. Plus one is going to be finished up in just a moment. Speed as well about to be done. Plus one just gets started here for Gamo. And he's sitting on five hatchery. Trying to produce as many Hydras as he can. He doesn't have any static defense right now. But he's on 35 drones. And he's got a ton of Hydras on the way. So he should be able to handle this. This little zealot move out, probably not going to go very well for Motive, unless he can do some really fancy splitting. Maybe run a couple of zealots up into the main or something like that. There's always that risk. Picking off an overlord here, is that going to supply block game? Well, not quite. The can just continue to produce, and yes, indeed, a DT is on the way. Taking some trades here. Zealot's going to boogie on out. Templar Storm is on the way. Two of those Storm Boys about to pop. The DT will hit the field. This is a great opportunity for a DT to just continuously deny the fourth. There's no real way to get out there and get that fourth down. If there's a DT and no Overlord speed, it's just so hard. It's so tough. You could also try to run into the natural if there's only like one hydra sitting here and you just happen to slip in you can end up doing a lot of damage if you get dt into the main it's insane how much you can do Doesn't look like he's gonna get that in just yet but he's looking for opportunities right now you can see zealots hitting the sides here just kind of poking in all right where's your army at how many hydras do you have see if i can maybe just slip in there with that DT. There's the fourth base on the way. Center left is the choice. DT is heading that direction and Overlord speed is done. Corsairs are going to be pushed away. 
Zealous getting tracked down right now. Pretty good play from Gamo so far. I feel like he's really getting into his stride now with 44 drones, but no Spire. Still no Spire anywhere. Which means drop play could be really handy here for Motive. Now, he does need to get into his detection in just a moment. Observers are going to be key as Lurker Aspect is about to finish. Got to be wondering where that gas is going always for the Zerg player. Where are they spending their gas? Because that's what we'll need to defend. If they're spending their gas on Mutas, then of course the air is the real threat. But if they're spending their Mutas, or if they're not spending their gas on Mutas, then it's got to be Lurkers coming into play soon. So... He's going to go ahead and get his... Oh, I don't actually see it. Where is the observatory? Observatory is missing right now, and that could be a problem. Okay, observatory is going to start now. It is very quick building. Got one Hydra on the ramp over here. Should be able to just morph that into a Lurker. Uh, yeah, there we go. Does just block everything out. With two Lurkers on the high ground, that's probably not going to go down. I just pushing up here as the third base gets taken for motive. Can he hold on to that high ground though? Could be a little bit tough. One DT moving around the outside of the map. He hasn't parked it just yet down at six o'clock. Would prefer to keep that active, just kind of moving around and scouting. Any forces of Gamo kind of moving through the middle of the map will be spotted by that. A lot of Hydras here now. Extra Sunken's coming down. Gamo really gearing up now for the later game. Third gas is finally operational. It can now produce basically pure Hydra Lurker Ling. He can't really afford to go into Hive just yet. He needs a fourth gas to make that happen. Hasn't made a move to take that just yet. Looks like this uh, DT going to be useful. Picking off a few additional lings around the map. Gamo just settling in now. Settling in for a nice long game. He's got the Queen's Nest on the way, but I'm telling you, he cannot afford to go into a hive right now. If he goes into hive, it's going to be a very scant hive. We're not going to have very many lurkers at all. Defiler's going to be pretty hard to afford as well. He might want to start that just so that he can get his next upgrades going because he's going to be capped out on uh, missile attacks here pretty soon. He's getting his third Evo Chamber. Yeah, you just can't do all of this at once on three gases, I'm afraid. You can't make Lurkers, get Hive, uh, triple upgrade, and get Defilers all at the same time. You need an extra base and... Motive will be here to deny that. He's looking for extra bases that might be coming up with those Corsairs, and he's responding with this big army. Now coming in for a trade. Motive moving up to the front line here. It's a pretty shallow lurker line. At least on this left-hand side. Need to move these lurkers over to this high ground, and he does. Links coming through are going to get stormed. Great, great storms there. Eating up so many lings as they're being thrown into this meat grinder. Yeah, these are great storms. And as soon as all the storm energy is gone, it's totally okay to just back away here. I want to cast like a couple more. Some of these have two storms apiece. Cast them on some of these reinforcements as they're coming out. And start to back away here. There's no need to stay forever. To stick around and try to push all the way through. You will just back off. You're running the risk of getting completely surrounded and killed. Losing all your Templar and all your Dragoons if you do try to stay. So I like the fact him backing off. Well, he needs to move that Observer. Get that fourth base going here pretty soon. We're at 13 minutes now. Motive is starting to get low in his main base. He's going to be mining out of that location here pretty quick. He needs to get that fourth online. Gamo has uh, a bit of a difficulty here with these this huge army moving up the ramp. Is he going to be able to come around the back and maybe go for a pincer? I think he's picking off a few units with that 
uh, pincering force. Can he actually get a good snipe on some of these Templar? No, has to back away now. Gamo taking quite a bit of damage, losing both of his sunken colonies, but maintaining the lurkers on the ramp and moving forward for a counter attack. See if he can actually pick off that nexus that's going up on this high ground. It looks like he might be able to do so. The Ling's coming out here. We've got Crackling on the way. Do they have plus one yet? No. No plus one just yet. Armor and melee is just about to finish. We still do not have a Spire, which is a little bit worrisome. The Spire, I mean, he can't afford everything. He's even going into drop right now. Wow. Gamo trying to get drop online. He's getting a Nidus down to the bottom right-hand corner. If he gets the fourth gas, maybe he can afford a Spire as well, but he's basically spending all his money into upgrades and buildings. All of his gas is going into upgrades and buildings right now. This is 200 gas. This is like 225 for plus two. Um, or this is, yeah, this is plus two right there. This is 100. This is uh, 150, something like that. This is another 100. There's so much gas right now that's being thrown into these upgrades and buildings that he really just can't afford to make hardly any lurkers. You can see just three lurkers on the way. He's adding them on, but he's being very careful with how he uses them and keeping them in a defensive position is a must. Corsairs finally do go down as Motive lacks the attention now in this late game stage to pay attention to everything. His army though is getting quite large. He's got another round of Templar and Storms to utilize to start to trade out some army here of Motive. Motive's line, or Gamo's line is very deep. It's gotten much deeper here with the lurkers and that's a lot of lings as well with crack and one one it's a little bit scarier than it was previously what i'm gonna wait for this archon but he should probably leave this position dt slipping on down into the bottom right hand corner a very nice thought from motive but game on top of it for now he should be able to pick this off oh is he gonna miss that there it is he sees it he will be able to clean that up. Oh, man. There is a big force coming down here. Motive just switching gears and heading straight down to the bottom right. Can Gamo get into position in time? I feel like if Motive had been a little bit quicker on the draw, he might have been able to shut down this base. But with the Lynx coming up and a Dark Swarm about to come down, I don't think you'll be able to break through here. Plague starts. And... Gamos up in the top right. He didn't see this base start, I don't think. Okay, he does see it with that Overlord, though. He should be able to go over here and cancel this Nexus. That's a huge pickoff. We can just prevent Motive from taking this base. And if he can get these bases down here, then he's going to be in a wonderful position. But that's a pretty big if. Motive in on four bases now with a lot of gateways. He's able to produce a huge amount of army and his upgrades let's take a look two two with plus three armor on the way and or plus three attack on the way and plus one plasma shields coming up soon game is gonna have a hard time grabbing all those bases and denying this top right hand corner from motive at the same time you can see it motive pushing up this ramp now he should be casting some storms on these hydras to take a better trade he's losing quite a few zealots right now just trying to get up this ramp. He does eventually pick all that off, but a drop is coming through. A huge doom drop into motive space. Gamo. Let's see how much damage this can do. We've got a shuttle here. No reavers inside of that shuttle just yet. Ling Lurker dropped out onto everything. And I don't see any storms coming out. He doesn't have the energy for it, actually. It was like one second away from having that energy and the Lings are now unleashed in the main. Oh my goodness. This is just gonna crush. And this is a great target as well. He finds the Templar Archives, immediately goes for that. If he can kill this, the uh, Citadel as well, and he already killed the uh, core. Oh, it's so tough to get these. Uh, it takes so long to get uh, Templar out once again. Yeah, he's completely reset. This is a beautiful play from Game on at the same time, pushing up with his Dark Swarm Lurker and Lings making their way to the front. Lings heading up here as well. Looks like this is not going to be as effective as the drop in the main. That drop just killing it for Game Owen. 
Wow, this one DT is still alive in here. I'm shocked that that thing is still uh, kicking in the top or in the bottom right. Is it going to be killed in the off now? Oh, it's so close. There it is. He gets it. These overlords are going to be pushed out. Do need to retreat these. You don't want to be losing all of your supply right now. You get supply block pretty quickly, losing about eight overlords just like that. Let's see. He's going to come up here. Gets a plague down. Oh, the probe train. He just barely misses the probe train. Oh, that is one of the worst feelings, I can tell you, as a Zerg player. Uh, when you throw down the... Uh, when you abur your lurkers right as the probes go running past and they all make it to the uh, Nexus, it's pretty rough. Oh, but can he actually kill the Nexus? It's dying so quickly. Plus one cracklings just ripping this Nexus apart. He will get it. He killed the pylon, by the way, just unpowering everything here. And meanwhile, another attack over on the left-hand side. Gamo is ripping Motive apart. Motive, I don't think he'll stand much longer. He's mined out in the main and natural. He hasn't been able to make Templar for quite some time. And GG has called a beautiful performance from Gamo. Really impressed with him. The way that he was able to, off of just three gas, transition into a hive and hold off Motive with kind of the bare minimum number of lurkers, right? He just really didn't have that many lurkers here. But he was still able to hold on, make that transition work, and get a drop off into the main. It's tough on this map when you're just, uh, you know, getting this mineral only up as your third to actually afford all of those different techs and have enough army to defend against what your opponent is doing against the, the Protoss uh, swarm, I guess, armada. What did you call it? The Protoss ball, death ball, I guess. It, it just can crush through, even if you're completely focused on making lurker hydra sometimes he can get broken but gable managed to walk that fine line he managed to balance his way through to the end game and that drop was just devastating motive gets out of this game and gamo takes one home for his squad hey guys it's been a few days since i casted the first four games of this series and Kind of coming back to it now, realizing that I did make some mistakes about the uh, format. Uh, the K-League is quite a bit different than what I originally thought. I thought it was way more similar to Pro League. But it seems to have quite a few differences. And one of them being that we're not sticking with the same matchups uh, throughout round one. We're actually mixing them up. Still, Motive is only going to play against... Uh, who was that? Gamo. Yeah, we're just going to have Motive versus Gamo, but we're going to continue to mix up the roster. It's all going to be done by Randomizer. And Mind ended up getting his name pulled uh, against Free. So with the score all tied up here between these two, we're going to continue on with round one. It's actually my birthday today, guys. I'm 33. And what better way to celebrate than to cast some... Pro League, like, why not? This is what I love to do. This is uh, where I get my enjoyment. This is where I get my fun. And so I'm just going to keep on casting. We've got a few more games at least here in round one. Um, since we're all tied up, it is best of seven. So we need to get to four wins. So at least two more games. At least. That's been very neck and neck so far. Looking forward to seeing what Mind brings out here against Free. Mind absolutely... A good competition for free. A good contender here against free. I would expect actually mine to come out ahead. But free may be able to surprise us here. This is uh, 2023 free. I don't think he's quite as strong as he is uh, today. Or he wasn't quite as strong as he is today. But uh, mind I think actually has dropped in power a little bit, right? He managed to get into the semi-finals against JYJ. I believe that was in 2023 or 2024. Can't remember. No. Pretty sure that was 2023, but I actually cannot remember right now off the top of my head. And so he was pretty darn good at that point in time, right as he was coming back to Bridwar. But he doesn't seem to be showing as much promise these days. He's going to get his SCVs 
into the main base. This SCV is scouting SCV here. By the way, we are on Nemesis. It's kind of that crazy map with the double assimilators all over the place and the double eggs in between them. Leading to a lot of weird island situations. It's not as crazy in PvT, I feel, but ZVP, this map had some insane matches. Remember my 2023 compilation, like best of, had a lot of matches on this map uh, in PvC. There's so many great fights. This map and Retro gave us some of the absolute best PvZ games that I've ever seen. And so getting into this game, we don't really have an advantage just yet. One Vulture slipping around the back. Hopefully Free will keep his dragon. He's actually patrolling it right now. I don't know if there's any uh, advantage to patrolling this. I feel like just keeping it right here might be better. I'm not sure though. Maybe it fires quicker if it's on patrol. I, I really don't know. Um, I know that you can use patrol clicks to uh, allow your units to fight uh, better in certain situations, but I don't think this is one of them. Might actually catch this vulture. He sees it, but not able to get any shots off on that. The Marines are pushing out here. It's just a Marine vulture push, it seems like. Going to be sending right across the map right now. Doesn't have speed, but he does have mines finished. And speed will start. Oh, just pushing out with the Marines to get a little bit of space, I guess. Force that uh, first Dragoon back into a defensive position. And now he's starting to clear out some of these eggs. So there are a few different things that actually clear eggs really, really well. I think we just saw uh, Free get lucky there with Miner. Maybe control properly. Backing up just in time to shoot that down. We kind of missed that part, but there are a few things that can kill these eggs really fast. Vultures being one of them. Vultures really do cut through these things quite quickly. Uh, another being DTs. DTs really do kill them fast. Uh, lurkers also deal a lot of damage to them, and storms can deal with eggs really, really quickly. Uh, a lot of other things, though, do take a significant amount of time. Like, dragoons take quite a bit of time to cut through the eggs. Uh, the Zerglings and Zealots, anything melee basically will take forever. Um, Marines as well take a really long time to kill eggs. It's kind of a, a funny way to balance a map is by putting eggs in. Uh, because something like a Marine push, for instance, it will eventually cut through the eggs, but you can, it'll, it'll buy you a lot of time to do things like build sunken colonies or something if you're in, uh, ZVT. Whereas the vultures, it hardly slows them down at all. It only takes a few seconds really to chop through those. If you've got, you know, six vultures, you'll kill it in a matter of seconds. Now, Drop is actually going to make its way in here for Mind. Mind, of course, being a very smart player. True to his name. Always able to find some sneaky builds to get in and deal some damage. He actually gets like two, three probes now in the main base. He's got a target here properly. Otherwise, he won't get too much out of this. Looks like he got about four probes there. Five, maybe. Not bad at all. Lots of damage. Going to try and run by here into the natural as well. One vulture does manage to slip in. Probably will get two, maybe three kills off of this as well. Two. And a third. No. So pretty good harassment here so far for mind. But Free's gone into a very quick third nexus. It's not crazy fast, but... He is getting that up now. 7 minute 28. Just about done. Must have started that around 6 minute 30. That's a pretty standard time nexus, but... He's now going to start to kill off these eggs. Push his way through there. Open up that space for himself to... Uh, come down here and defend. He knows that there's still a dropship out on the map, which is a threat. We could rotate around once again, like bring a tank or something over to this high ground, drop that tank. Imagine coming through here, this tiny little bit of uh, dark space there on the right-hand side. Might be able to do that. Oh my goodness, Free just going to run right in here. And he guns down the tank. That's actually a really big kill. And he'll only lose two Dragoons for that. A pretty decent trade here for Free. I don't know if this can actually hit. Looks like it can't. And so Free is going to continue to harass after killing that first tank. He's going to be feeling pretty good. However, Mind is 
throwing down a bunch more factories. He probably needs another add-on here in just a moment. He's got his second gas rolling, and he did deal significant probe damage earlier, now keeping up with the worker count overall of free, despite being on less uh, production facilities. He's only got two command centers to the three nexuses of free right now. One shuttle is out, but the army is not that big. Oh, there's another shuttle. Okay, here he comes. This is big. Can free get the damage that he needs right now? Get some SCV kills. Oh, the choice to build a wraith right now is just beautiful. However, you gotta move your SCVs. Two kills already. Can he get some more? Almost taking out this shuttle. He's got to drop and go for the kills. Can he actually get it? No shot. Free does not get the scarab out. And the drop was not very effective at all. Free just kind of threw that away for only two workers. It's not looking good for him so far. See if he can bring it back here. But mine appears to be in full control. He's got a tank drop for this high ground, I imagine. We'll probably go over here, drop the vultures, lay mines, and drop the tank back here. And that's going to be a real pain for free. He's going to have a really hard time clean clearing that out. He hasn't cleared these eggs yet, and he's only got two dragoons. So this will be significant pain here from being dished out by mind. Siege up on the high ground. Mines should come right there. We will lay those down right away. Some vultures trying to slip in. We'll be blocked by these few zealots. Still, he's over here. He's getting some kills. He hasn't killed any probes, unfortunately. Then it seems like this uh, shuttle will shut down this play. But he's managed to deny some mining. Set up that position for a future attack a little bit later on. Double factory now pumping away with those add-ons. And we've gone up to six factory, but with upgrades as well. So feels like kind of an older style that we're seeing on a mind. It makes sense we're in 2023, but I feel like this was starting to get phased out. You can see free adding on. Oh, I thought this was a second robo, but it's not. He's going up into storm now. Drop over here. Has a tank in it. Uh oh, mind. Not paying attention to that. Making a pretty big mistake with his dropship. Pays dearly for that. And three will get this set up without too much more fuss. Still 53 workers here for free. The army supply is 40 ahead. No, 30 ahead right now. Almost 40 for uh, of a lead here for, for free. And it appears that that Wraith has just gone down. So the Wraith fell. Ouch. Units you know, kind of running through that there. Not the best for free. I keep wanting to say motive. I'm not sure why. I guess I keep I keep casting motive games. So uh, he's just in my head right now as the Protoss player. But free is a solid contender as well. And actually motive is right there as well. So that's kind of messing me up double. Dropship coming forward. Forces the siege. And backs away. Nice play by Free. Just slowing things down. You really want to force as many siege ups as possible. While Mind is pushing. Slow him down. Keep him back. And get prepared with the counter attack. Uh, or the surround play. We've got 11 Dragoons here on the front line. Some Mines were thrown down behind to actually catch reinforcements. So that's a pretty good move by Mind. We do need to see an observer come out here and clear this. He's actually going to send one zealot. Oh, no. Free walking right into that. Really great placement of these mines here from mind. Oh, man. And these ones on the right-hand side as well. These are nasty. These are going to get so much damage. And, yeah, all the dragons going to end up going down. Do we have something out on the map that Free can utilize to deal some damage? I don't see it. Where are the shuttles? We've got two shuttles. One of them with two Templar inside of it. That's all the Templar we've got. Let me go ahead and kill that mine before it can detonate. That's a lot of Zealots, but all the Dragoons are gone. Let's see if he can get in here and actually block this. 
Making some shots. Oh my god. Did he lose the shuttle with the Templar? No. Okay. He managed to keep the shuttle with the Templar alive at least. Uh, he lost the shuttle with the two Zealots inside of it. That was targeted down very nicely by Mind. Breaking through though everywhere. Free gonna just crush all these tanks. Reduce that tank count by a significant amount and continue to push forward. They actually get in here and push it all the way into the natural. It seems like Mind is gonna get forced all the way back. There's only a you know, small lead in the supply for free. Free not taking the greatest trades with mostly Zealot Army versus uh, mostly Vulture Force here. So if that Templar gets sniped, Dragoons at the front. Free pushes everything back and he's now got his fourth base operational with Mind having no uh, third and his resources starting to run dry he has to make a move and i don't think the move is actually to, to to go for another attack i think you have to try and take a third there's really no other choice at this point he is gonna start to break through these eggs he starts a command center he doesn't have a lot of time to get this up because he's already 14 minutes in 14 minutes he just started his third command center he really wanted to win with that last push but going cross map, pushing cross map with the two base play, I mean, it's just not advisable. Gonna try and push down into the bottom left, bring some tanks over here. Maybe you can lay mines over at this location and drop tanks here or here to start killing the uh, cannons. That's not the way to do it. You don't wanna drop the tanks in range of the cannons, but you will drop them there. Throws down the mines over on this right hand side. One zealot here, maybe gonna ruin his day. He's got more zealots in this shuttle. Tank goes down. One more tank is available. He's going to be able to siege up and push these probes away. Zealots coming down to reinforce. Pretty good move by mind, honestly. Feels like he's actually keeping himself in the game with this uh, this drop down to bottom left. Gonna push through these eggs, it looks like. Trying to, anyway. Free, gonna go ahead and take a base over in the center right now, and this natural at the same time. Zelts come down here to clear this out, and you will save the Nexus at least. But a few probes were saved as well. Down to 52 though. So not exactly where he wants to be. He'd love to be at like 70 probes at this point in the game, but Free's just kind of lost a little bit too many probes too many times. And he's struggling to keep that probe number high. More vultures. Gonna get mines dragged into them. These zealots here should be able to clear out everything. And mind starting to take a bit more purchase on the map. Finally mined out in the main base. Just in the nick of time having this third come up. Before he was relegated to just one base. And now he has the, the difficult task of securing a fourth base before... His natural mines out. It's getting very close. He's only got a couple minutes left on that base before it's completely gone. So he needs to make a move. And it seems like mine wants to make a move for this base. It feels like he wants to send units through this direction. Come down here. Hold this base. And try to shut free out of the bottom left. So simultaneously destroy free space and take a base of his own, but it's gonna be a struggle. I don't think he can get up here. We've got a shuttle over here, just kind of scouting things out, I suppose. We will be able to kill quite a few probes over at this base, but it'll be easy for free to reestablish that. Ooh, big storms over here, dealing quite a bit of damage. Oh my God, I'll have to picture and picture that. Nasty, nasty damage. We're at 50 workers now down to just 28. Absolutely brutal at the 17 minute mark. More bases coming up for free. He's got plenty of mining right now. And with that one drop, I think he's turned the tide back in his favor. Only one assimilator has been killed. You might as well kill both. There's no point in just killing one. Because Zealots can still get through there, but Vultures and Tanks can't. So there's really no point. Wow, that dropship getting through with just 8 HP. Yeah, Mind is really going to regret 
not killing that one assimilator. That was a very big mistake. Now, where is this dropship? Okay, there it is. On the high ground. He's going to siege up. Throw down some more mines. See if he can actually kill anything here. Looks like he will kill a few workers, but Mind is losing all of his economy. He's down to just 24 workers on his side of the map. This drop here cleans up everything so easily, and Free is just running away with this game. He's got double the economy. Mind taps out. Free takes another game home for his squad. Ah, here we go. Motive versus Gamma once again. The roulette wheel has spoken. We get this matchup for possibly the last game of round one. Gamo's team on match point. If he can just take this one away, then he will clutch it out for his squad. Motive, on the other hand, everyone's looking to him to extend this series. If he t manages to win this one, he will take us all the way to game seven. We are here on Neosilphid with a PVZ Gamo has not built a spawning pool. He's not going for an uh, a nine pool. Is he going to go for an over pool? There it is. He does drop that spawning pool. We'll be getting out some early lings to help with some of this aggression. Gateway play coming out of motive. Let's see his overall control with those early game salads. Is it up to par? Is it going to be good enough to get him some sort of advantage here in the early game? He's going to come in, see the spawning pool. You can see he doesn't chase the drone. He knows that he needs to check and make sure that there's no nine pool. He sees the pool is not quite finished yet. And so he will come out to block now, hiding the drone over here on the left. A very good move from Gamo, but it's not really going to affect the outcome here. Motive comes over. He sees the drone and he is going to force it over here to the third base. So Gamo going to go ahead and take this as his third. I think he placed it just in the right position so that he can set the second hatchery on the right hand side. Um, and that'll make a full wall here or if at least it'll make this into a wall I think and so I, I guess it would be better to put it on this one hey if you put it here it feels like the, the patch mining over on this side would be really bad but here it doesn't seem as bad I feel how many lings did we make it looks to be six seems like we made six lings or maybe, was it four? Okay, actually four links. And Motive runs around the links with the Zealot. This is a pretty good move for Motive. It's actually going to catch Gamo way off guard. And because he's over here on the other side of the map, putting on pressure with the links. And he's not going to get the run by. There's two probes in the natural. Helping to block that out. And the Zealot just runs into the main base. This one Ling here is actually doing a good job of slowing him down. I thought he would just go for it and say, you know, whatever. I'll just try to kill as many drones as I can. But he actually turns around just due to that one Ling poking. And he's going to go ahead and hide the Zealot. I feel like this was a missed opportunity for Motive. If he had just kept going with this, the probe Zealot combo and only one Ling to help defend... Uh, along with these drones. I think you could get a drone kill. For sure, you could probably get a drone kill. Uh, it would come down to Gamo's perfect uh, control. Like, he would really have to control well, pulling the drones out uh, at the exact right time. But it's definitely doable. It's definitely doable. Um, keeping it in between the, the gas and minerals here is also not bad. Like, it's not... It's not as good as killing a drone, but it's still pretty decent. Like, it's going to help you out a little bit. You can always just send it in and try to get some information. Or you can just sit here and watch the drone count. That's also helpful. You're also watching the eggs. Whatever's popping under the eggs is very good information. And the probe is out here still at the front as well. He's got the lings pinned down in the natural. Like, they can't just leave. So, I mean, I, I feel this play. This is not bad, honestly, for motive. And... 
We are going for Hydralis Den right now, the first Hydralis upgrade, speed upgrade, as most players will do. He's coming down first. Probe finally does get picked off. Will he get a drone? Oh, it's so close. Almost gets that drone. Three Hydras are on the way now. There's a Hydra in the natural. Will he just use the one Hydra to kill and kind of transition here? But okay, five Hydras are on the way. He's actually going to put on pressure. Maybe try to kill the wall. The cannon is kind of far back and there's not enough room for a cannon in front of this. So placing the cannon here might put it at a risk of being sniped. Could be a little dangerous. Let's see what he ends up doing with that. Okay, throws the cannon right in the front there. You can actually run up and snipe that super easily. Uh, as long as the zealots aren't jumping in the way. So quite a few hydras are on the way. We've got range coming up that first corsair is going to come out and it'll immediately get denied by these hydras okay he's going to take this fight here does need to push the zealots back and keep the overlord alive uh, can he get up here and actually deny any of these cannons it feels like he should be able to do so no he's just going to deal some damage to that cyber core and backs away we have any hydras under here one hydra under this overlord clump don't see any uh, overlords anywhere else on the map. I guess there's one tucked over here. And just pure dronage coming from Gamo now. He's put on the pressure at the front. But he's lacking the lair. An evil uh, evolution chamber. And he's only got 28 drones. So this play doesn't really feel worth it for Gamo. But let's see what he ends up doing with it. Is he going to just power up and then go for... You know, five hatch hydra timing right before nine minutes. That's a possibility. Layer does start though. So that makes me feel like maybe that's not what he's going to do. Although seven hydras on the way. We're sitting at 28 drones. This could be a really intelligent play actually from Gamo. This could catch motive completely off guard. 10 hydras on the way right now. There's only one reason to be making that many hydras all at the same time right now. He is going to continue this bust. He's going to try and get in there and kill right before M Motive has his Templar online. There's quite a few Zealots. He's got to be careful. I think Motive is scouting this out, though. He sees. He sees what's coming. He starts another Photon Cannon. He actually needs more than this. He needs, like, three more Photon Cannons to start right now. He does start another one. Hydras are massing at the front. We're about to have this bust. Evolution Chamber's on the way, so there's a hope in a prayer for Gamo. If this does not work, he has a backup plan, but I think this might just straight up kill. And yeah, Gamo just annihilates these zealots. They die so quickly. Probes are going to come out and try to fight, but the cannons are going to be going down. And while that's a great probe drill, getting right on top of these hydras and forcing a lot of them back. There's not that many of them left. He jumps on the, one of the last cannons. There's two more warping in. Finally, they finish. Cybercore is going to go down. Four more hydras on the way. This is a really tight hold. If he manages to hold it all, it's going to be by the skin of his teeth. Just three zealots left. They're going to come running forward. The probes are not off the line in time. They actually had to get these uh, into the front a lot sooner, but... The probes are going to come out now. It probably would have been better to just have them sitting there. He was being a little bit greedy, though, and he's going to pay the price with his life. This last cannon goes down, and Gamo's done it. He's managed to break through, and he's managed to take this win for his team. Motive just not quite having the right stuff here to hold off a follow-up Hydra Bust such as this. This is a great ladder build, by the way, guys. What Gamo's done here, if you can copy... Uh, a similar build like this, you can get a lot of wins on the ladder because so often it's just Hydralis, kill the wall, and then a big transition into Lurker. Uh, you know, you get your Lair, you get your uh, Spire. But if you take a look at what Gamo did, he made the Evolution Chamber, but he didn't actually research anything, did he? I don't think he did. I think he just canceled the, the research. Yeah, I don't think he ever started that. Or he ever... Maybe he never even started that. But he did cancel the lair for sure, right? He built the lair as Motive was flying through. 
to convince Motive that he was actually going to transition and play a normal game. And he hits this timing right at about eight minutes. So with a full minute left before the Templar start to come out and be a real threat. Uh, with their storm available, it's going to be at least nine minutes when Motive has that ready. So he hits this very nice timing. And I tell you guys, if you play this style on ladder, if you try this build on ladder, you will win games. This is a very tricky way to play. And it takes some significant scouting and really in extensive game knowledge from the Protoss player to figure out that this is coming, especially if you're going to do things like build a layer and cancel it and build an evolution chamber and not do anything with it it looks like a normal build it looks like a normal transition out of like five to ten hydras in the early game to kill the wall to maybe threaten the bust force cannons and then just transition and it just completely caught motive off guard just like it would most ladder protoss players now let's jump into our next game guys it's actually round two now because Gamo winning that has tipped the scales. We've got four wins on the board for his team. Coming in clutch here for the action squad. Free barracks. Getting a little helping hand here from Gamo, the slightly uh, lower rated player on the squad. That's why he's always matched against Motive, but he came in clutch here. Give them their first win in round one. We're going to go to round two, guys. And that's going to be another best of seven. I don't think that's actually King of the Hill like most pro leagues, though. So that, that was my mistake, guys. I thought this was more similar to pro league. But I can see here that it's actually just another best of seven. And if uh, Effort Squad manages to come back in that next round, we will go to an ace match. And that'll be uh, the randomizer to decide who plays at the end. So, guys, thank you for watching. I'm just going to cut it short here. We're going to do round two in the next video. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my birthday. Hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. And I'll see you in the next video.